The sun was setting as my best friend and I were walking on a path on the edge of town. Our skins were bathed in the red hue as we spoke of hatred and politics, as most autumns do. I was telling him of the script I was writing about Vinland Saga, about how it is a story that revolves around hatred and revenge. The conversation swung as we began to talk about hatred in the real world, as the Sunnis are in constant war with the Shi'is, or how Muslims in Egypt have an illogical hatred for the Coptic Christians. I then reminded him how some Muslims carry an illogical hatred for gay people, and it was here where he pulled out his phone, scrolled through a few chats, and showed me a pride poster. The pride poster had two Muslim women kissing, and he told me that this poster was taken down because it offended the Muslim community and in their official statement there was blatant hypocrisy as on one side they went on and on about being tolerant and on the other side the community explained how it was offensive and ordered the poster to be taken down. It was in this moment that this video was born because I responded to him with a story and it's one I'll share with you in a few minutes. There are a few things though that I must say before we get into story time. First, to state all Muslims hate people who are in the LGBTQ plus community is wrong because as Shahid al and Arsha Ziadi state in their 2021 article, Muslims are not a homogenous group and are diverse. Second, the hate we were talking about were things we had witnessed and generalizing like George Bush Samuel Huntington and others who came before them is dangerous because if we start speaking about all Muslims and homogenizing them it starts to sound just like how Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris and Ben Shabibo talk about Islam. Hey folks small edit here as I just noticed that I just plop George Bush and Samuel Huntington without explaining the connection between the two. You see Samuel Huntington wrote a book in 1997 called The Clash of Civilizations and it would have not have picked up any attention because it's really a garbage book and it doesn't really have any evidence or support to the thesis of Clash but what happened was that the right-wing think tanks swallowed up Clash of Civilization because it was perfect right the fall of the Soviet Union happened seven years ago at the time and so America needed a new enemy and this became the monolithic civilization of Islam which according to Huntington was out to get the Western civilization and so after 9-11, this rhetoric, the clash rhetoric and clash thesis was seen to be appearing in George Bush's speeches. And what is now known by historians and those who study rhetoric was that George Bush was using the rhetoric of clash. So third, we cannot be like Jordan Pearson, Sam Harris and Shabibo, who to this day use the rhetoric of Bush and Huntington's clash to cast Islam as this barbaric civilization and all Muslims are seen as monsters. Fourth is a however, because in my research and in tiptoeing into spaces, I found Muslims who are just like Ben Shapiro and Jordan Pearson, as these conservative Muslims defend gender exceptionalism and show and carry a vile homophobia and transphobia. It is for these conservative Muslims that I'm making this video, but this video is also an admission that I was raised in these spaces and I had to confront the homophobia and the transphobia. Fifth. And finally, while I encountered many conservative Muslims, I found Muslims who transitioned, Muslims who are non-binary, and there are probably many bi, gay, and lesbian Muslims out there. There are others like me who are challenging this toxic side of Islam and are creating safe spaces for Muslims. Sometime in the late 1980s, my parents immigrated to the land that is now known as Canada, and I was born here. My parents, being Muslims, raised me as a Muslim. I currently practice the religion mildly today. From an early age, I was placed in an Islamic school, which oddly was a safe haven for Muslims who were raised in a post-9-11 world. 
And after nine years in that Islamic school, I went to a public school. Although I was able to meet some really cool people in this high school, I still had to attend Saturday school and Sunday halaqas. I was in this bubble for a good 12 years, but the good thing was my parents were never extreme and they only placed us in these schools so we did not lose our language and our religion. Swiping through those memories now, I realized that my parents probably feared that we would get assimilated into Canadian culture and forget Arabi and Islam. That we would become white or Oreos, but like Arab Oreos? I don't know what you would call this, but like white versions of Arabs who are void of their culture, void of their language, void of their religion, and just be white. Furthermore, when I try to recall what I was taught about the homosexuals, I cannot remember any person teaching us to fear or hate gay people or any of my old Muslim friends blatantly expressing their homophobia. What I do remember was that the idea of being gay was a sin and it was stated as an unrefutable fact. I remember being told the punishment many times. The scariest thing was that this was normalized and never questioned. I broke away from the mold when I started talking to a Saudi friend who was questioning Islam and was then super into the atheist wave. It was in these conversations where I first began to think of religion critically. Although I did not know it, my friend was actually talking about the social constructedness of religion. Something I would get years down the line when I read James Hogg's The Testament of a Justified Sinner. However, what was vital was breaking the authority the Quran held. And it was here when I started to read the Quran like it was a series of metaphors like how most Christians read the Bible. And this may seem like an obvious thing, but many Muslims are taught that the Quran should be read verbatim and as if everything is real. It's an abstract, it's a metaphor, a colorful exaggeration. When we're waiting for something we want, it takes forever. We sit in traffic for an eternity. Abstracts, metaphors, colorful exaggerations. To us, maybe, but, but not to God, not to him. And it shouldn't be for us either. Communion, the transformation of bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. A metaphor? No, God tells us. Miracles, walking on water, rising from the dead, abstracts? No, God tells us. E eternal life, a colorful exaggeration? No. No, that's right, you call it out. God's gifts are as tangible as the ground beneath our feet. And his covenant, it's not abstract. No, it's a contract, scrawled in flesh, inked in the blood of the martyrs, and yet, try as we might, we cannot visualize, we can't. For example, many conservative Muslims believe that Allah actually grabbed the rocks of hellfire and rained them down on gay sinners. Reading the story of Lut in such a way makes many conservatives believe that humans have the right to place the same punishment on gay people. Reading the Quran as real, as true, as absolute fact is something many extreme Muslims do, such as those in the Taliban or in Saudi Arabia. Furthermore, since it is Allah's words, Many Muslims are taught they must obey every single command because these are the commands from Allah. Those who question and disobey are judged by Muslims and are seen as not real or good Muslims. In a sense, I became a rebel, a person who would challenge people who were reading the Quran as if it was real. Back then I was super serious about all this and now I don't really care but back then I would spiral and start asking myself questions like what is a Muslim? What is a good Muslim? What is a sin? Who gets to judge sin? Why are people attacking those who sin? When many Islamic scholars say that the only power who may judge is Allah, it is God. The final question was one I started to ask myself when I was in 8th grade when I gave a speech about the hypocrisy of worldwide aid. It was one that was kind of dark because I, like, I was 13 and I asked, does God even care? At the time, Libya was being bombed, and the Syrians were being gassed, and people were dying. And so, 13-year-old B kept asking, does God even care? These questions helped me when I entered university and was flooded with new ideas. I didn't even know what capitalism was, but to this day I remember the feeling of disgust when I learned about it. I felt gross, and what was so odd was that my Muslim community was promoting capitalism. The next year I learned critical theory, I found Barth, 
Butler, Edward Said, Raf Anon, Foucault, Jacques Derrida, while also stumbling around anarchism and communism. In my years getting my bachelor's, I threw myself into courses about poetry, romanticism, but also history courses that went into Latin America, the Cold War, the Vietnamese War, the history of the Soviet Union, and indigenous history. As I began to learn more and more and more, I grew distant from the Muslim community, and my parents were cool with the person who I was becoming. I became a leftist who cared about people and the world. In my bachelor's, I learned a lot of history, a lot of theory, and read some great literature, and I prepared myself to become a teacher. And so after marching for four years through history and literature, I applied to become a teacher. By this time, I was left as heck. To this day, I don't know how I got accepted in the education program at my university, but I did, and I was on a path to become a teacher, and I did become one, but it was here where I, I met some really cool non-binary educators. Being in class with them was normal, and, and all of us were there to learn from each other. Although I say I learned a lot in my bachelor's, in the education program, I learned so much more, and I learned from other educators who have spent years of their life working to make education a safer place and a better place for marginalized folks. There were moments where I was uncomfortable, but talking openly made me reflect and look deeper into my past. And the Islamophobia that was thrown at me over the years is something my mind continuously blocks, but ever so often a memory seeps through and I remember how the white kids looked at me whenever I said my name. Their eyes were full of fear. But that's a story for another time, because right now, it's story time. <laughs> <laughs> in my final year of education i had to do a full year of practicum and so i walked into this massive school and sat in the common room a soft piano began to play as the music teachers were fiddling around trying to find the right vibe and as they did I began to look around for my mentor, and I finally found them. I knew it was them because they flashed me a smile, and it's a smile that's now ingrained in my memory. I didn't meet them yet, or have a chance to speak to them, as they went off to prep. I instead went to this English meeting. It was about exams, curriculums, books, and canons. You know, the boring stuff. After it finished, the small white lady, who would be my neighbor and a joy to be around, pulled me to the side and looked up at me to this day. I don't know why she pulled me to the side, but I assume it's because my name was Arabic, and so I think she feared I would be homophobic or transphobic. After her gaze locked onto me, she would tell me that my mentor went by they them pronouns. It took my mind a second to link what she said to what I had learned in university, but I thanked them for telling me and I went on to find my mentor. It took me... <laughs> It took me a few minutes to find my mentor's classroom because the school was huge. But when I found my mentor, they first welcomed me into their classroom and sat me down. They began to explain that they were non-binary, and I think they also feared that I would be this conservative Muslim who wouldn't get it, but I was far from being conservative. I told my mentor I had no issue and that I respect them. From then on, it was normal, and even more, it was exciting, and it was a fresh breath of air to see this educator, this teacher, create a safe place for LGBTQ students. And I learned a lot, and I was pulled even further left because they were teaching stuff I had never heard of, I'd never thought of, and it was life-changing, I think, seeing students interact with them, and just seeing it all normalized in front of my eyes. The message of the story is this, it was normal. Whenever I now encounter a Muslim who goes on and on and on and on and on about the so-called trans agenda or how being gay is a disease, I first ask them if they ever met a trans person or a non-binary person or a gay or lesbian person and 100% of the time they answer with a no. When they do, I tell them this story, how I was paired with this non-binary teacher who welcomed me, a Muslim who could have been transphobic or homophobic into their classroom, and they taught me the ins and outs of being a teacher. They were there for me when I was having my panic attacks, or when I was struggling with students. I tell these people how normal it was, and to stop hating, to stop fearing, to have an open mind. Those who are in the LGBTQ plus community are normal. They're human beings, and they've gone through enough.
before I say the end, I did some digging around, found some resources for LGBTQ Muslims. And I think in the future, it would be cool if I did an extensive research project looking into intersectionality and where a millennial or Zoomer Muslim stand when it comes to LGBTQ rights. I think there are a lot of Muslims of my generation and older who simply tolerate the LGBTQ plus community. But do they support them? I did find some academic articles on the subject, but I haven't read them all since this video is a story time video <laughs> and I didn't want to bog it down with research. In my opinion, the conservative Muslims are not truly following the footsteps of the Prophet. The Islamic Prophet was a man who first began his religion with the poor and those who were enslaved. He accepted drunks and people who buried their babies. And I think if he were alive today, he wouldn't ever mock a trans person or try to convert them back onto the righteous path of Islam or whatever. If the Prophet truly supported the poor and those who were persecuted, I think he would have supported the LGBTQ community. I think what we're currently seeing are a bunch of people who interpreted text and are placing rigid binaries and are being way too extreme. I could talk forever, but here are my final words. If you are a Muslim and you're unsure about your gender or who you love, don't listen to those who are claiming that you're confused. That's all made up. Trans women are women. Trans men are men. And people who are non-binary are human beings. I want any who come to this video who are unsure to know that trans Muslims do exist and that your existence is not haram. Hey folks, welcome to the real end of the video. Uh, this one was a bit different from what I normally create as I'm a manga or anime video essayist, but I thought, you know what, I want to break out of that mold a bit and kind of tell the story because I think it's important to share experiences like this. And especially, I really wanted to make this in Pride Month and let it out in Pride Month to celebrate Pride Month, but um, I was working on Attack on Titan at the time and that took up all of my effort and all my energy and i just wanted to get that thing out because god damn it i hate attack on titan <laughs> and then this this idea came at the very end right when i was walking with my friend talking about scripts and boring out of politics and he threw that that amazing pride poster at me and i just thought i gotta make a video about this i gotta tell my experience and my story and this is how this was created. Uh, this video, it took me a few times to make it, like to record it, because there are moments where I got really excited and I was like, should I be excited, right? Like, should I be, <laughs> like, <laughs> like what is the proper tone to be, to be having here? And so I ended up going with the most boring tone. And so sorry if I sound extremely bored or, or like, you know, without any, tone and artistically I chose that because I wanted things to be dull boring and normal you know I don't agree that like I think many Muslims when they talk about the LGBTQ plus community they tend to you know look at them like they're there's some interesting fascinating new thing and for me it was like no I just I just went to work <laughs> I went to this, uh, I was a student teacher and I went to work with a non-binary person and, you know, they, they helped me out, I helped them out and I borrowed their classroom, but it was extremely normal. Like, it's not something we should be looking at with fascinating eyes, but rather it should be normal. And I think that's why I chose that particular tone when I was telling the story and telling my experience. I also watched Midnight Mass and, and so part of the script was stemming from that, right? Like... You know, there's that moment where he kind of goes up, uh, the preacher, the father guy, where he stands up and he's like, No, it is not metaphor. It is real. God's words are meant to be taken for real. And I, I was watching that the other week and I thought, that is amazing. I got to I gotta throw that in my video. Um, yeah, I don't know. This channel is going to be kind of scattered, I think. Um, I have a lot of videos that I have planned, but I kind of want to mix it between history, um, like historical issues, literature, and some really cool environmental things I have coming up. But I also have, like, I also like anime and manga, so sometimes I'm gonna, like, throw one of them out and talk about how cool some stories are. I don't think I'm ever gonna go and enter fandoms like Attack on Titan because, god damn it, those people are so toxic. 
Like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just gonna complain for a second, but holy crap, those comments I got from that video. Like, come on, dudes. 99% of it was chill, but there was a huge margin of those people who came into my video and were just nasty, you know? So I don't know if I'm ever gonna go back into Attack on Titans and, and cover that because screw it. I hate that thing. I hate Attack on Titans. So yeah, that's my story. That's my video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And one thing that I really want to highlight is that I say that I learned all these things, right? Like I learned in university. I learned through my practical experience. And one thing that a lot of people need to take and understand is that I'm continuously learning, right? There's never a point in my life where I say I've learned everything because I haven't. And there are so many different experiences out there. And this video in itself was inspired by different creators like Foreign, Aeronox videos, and and Finn the Fantastic, Fantastic Fox. Mr. Fox. All of these creators have helped me in some way and form build the courage to make this video. But also, I learned a lot from them. And I continuously do. So, this is the very end. <laughs> this is the true ending of this video. <laughs> there is no more. That's it. This is my... Since I'm the author and I have authorial intent, I declare that this is the end of the story. The end. That's it. We're going to close the book and, and, and call it a day. But I hope you folks like this video and I hope you enjoyed my story. I hope it wasn't too boring and too dull. Um, although it was intended to be. But, you know, I don't want people to sleep while they watch my video. But yeah, that's it. That's my video. Make sure you like. Make sure you comment. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, share it. Share it with your mom. Share it with your dad. Share it to your cousin. Share it to a Muslim. You know, like, just post this URL in a mosque and see what they do. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm going to go into my mosque and I'm going to post this URL all over the walls. And hopefully somebody, you know, scans it and recognizes my voice. And they, they'll probably comment down and be like, hey, I know who you are. You, you're like, you're like teacher guy <laughs> anyways take care and i'll catch you all next time sit down